All right, guys, we are live and just about ready to get things underway here. We're going to be streaming some matches today. All right, guys, Raiders we Esports are live Center and in Toronto. just about We've ready to get things ten underway teams here. In a We're going to be bracket streaming today. some matches today. A lot of fun. All right, guys, we joined by Juan today. How you doing, Juan? How's it going, everybody? Doing pretty good, as always. Like I always like to say, pretty excited to get this going because... Um, Casting is always so much fun. Today should be an interesting day for you guys tuning in. We've got a lot of unfamiliar faces here, but a few familiar ones as well. It's just going to be a more casual tournament, but it's going to be nice to see some new faces, some old faces, all going head-to-head -head against each other. But our first match of the day is going to be Logo versus TNS Squad. And I'm interested to see who we've got on both sides here. I'm not familiar with a whole lot of these players in this first match, but um, so far we've got about seven of our ten players in the lobby, so we're just waiting on a few here, but uh, it should be an interesting day of events here. We've got guys on TNS squad. We have NB Fire, Knight, Happy June, Tony, and Chow, and then so far for Logo, we've got Belmont and Emzin. Emzin, he's playing under the name of one of the guys from Super Valiant, so hopefully he can live up to the namesake. If not, I guess we'll see, but it looks like they may be um, somewhat of a Chinese roster. I know we did see a couple of just full Chinese teams when we had the LAN in Toronto three or four years ago, so it wouldn't surprise me to see one of those teams up here again showing up for one of these events. And some of these teams are just really, really strong players that aren't very well heard of, uh, but it'll be interesting to see who would win this one. But uh, I don't know any of the players in the lobby, so I'm actually pretty excited to see what they'll bring forth for us today. But um, it looks like our map selection may be Black Widow. I'm not sure if that's the decided map yet, but um, hopefully we can get the ball rolling soon for you guys and get into some action. Looks like we've got the rest of the players loaded here in the lobby now. We are just about ready to go. I think we've got all of the players in here now. And yeah, things look like could be interesting here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the bracket though, just so we can get an idea of how this one will play out. So there's going to be Looks like four teams in round one here. The winner of this will go on to play Doppelganger, who got a buy just off the random luck of their draw for their seed. So um, we'll see who will get to go on and face them in round number two. We've got about 10 teams here, though. Um, it looks like we've got kind of a mix. We've got some teams that are actual pre-made teams, but we've also got teams of just casual players getting together to see what they can do. So it's going to be an interesting mix, um, but it's definitely a lot of new players um, at least new players to me. I haven't seen a lot of these guys play in any major tournaments or anything like that, so I'm actually interested to see what they've got in store for us today. But um, just looking ahead here, let's see. We've got Who Cares, 3S, and R. Liang coming in for the side of Logo as well. So looks like everybody's in here and just about ready to go, and we will get things underway. All right, it looks like everybody's getting ready up here, and I think we are going to be playing this first one on Black Widow 2.0. Um, but just looking at the map here, Juan, what are your thoughts on Black Widow as a competitive map here? It looks like might have a slight delay here, just waiting on someone from Logo to get ready. I think he's just in his storage, but uh, we are just about ready to go here, guys. 
Yeah, sorry about that. Mike wasn't working. Uh, but yeah, so we do see a lot of similarities between Black Widow and Dust 2. Um, and it's been said plenty of times, but it's something that needs to be iterated uh, just in case we have, you know, a lot of people that do watch Counter-Strike and are watching this for the first time. Um, so we are going to see a lot of uh, battles down mid, uh, the same crucial choke points that are uh, important in Dust 2 sometimes translate over to Black Widow. You've got long, long A, such a long, narrow spot in the map that forces so many fights. Uh, so we are going to see a lot of smoke and flash usage to block out certain choke points. Um, and uh, we're going to see a lot of aim battles happening down A mid. Sometimes even B as well, because we like to, we do see teams that like to be aggressive out of B and and peak that uh that room there. So long, I haven't played the game. I don't even remember the calls. But by bridge, we're gonna see a lot of battles there as well. Yeah, and I'm actually interested to see how this event plays out. Not only for the competitive atmosphere with these new players, but there's actually a, a more relaxed gun rule set as well. These players are going to be allowed to use things like armor, VIPs, and a little bit more flexibility on what guns they can use. So I'm actually interested to see how that plays out as well. I think we may see a lot of differences in gameplay just based on their ability to use those weapons here. So um, you're going to see a lot more wall bang than you would normally expect in a standard competitive match but i think that could add a little bit of fun to it as well with some of those vips you can definitely get a lot more long range battles going on uh, and it looks like most of the players in the lobby are going to be rocking some of them as well so i'm actually pretty interested to see how will that maybe benefit or hurt certain teams depending on what they're used to playing with but um, a lot of the casual players are still used to playing against those vips so i think it'll be pretty even ground still but i know i've seen some of these guys play in um, on this right hand side here, Team Logo, I've seen a couple of them play in some of the um, sort of like Chinese only events that they do in some separate servers. And I know for those tournaments, they only use like whatever gun they want. There is no strict rules when it comes to gun sets. But uh, just looking at that one, what do you think we can sort of expect with a uh, more relaxed rule set going into it? I think we can expect two things. And we can kind of compare it to how the rule set in the actual Chinese Pro League is over there in China. Um, sometimes we do see a lot of aggressiveness just because you can um, exploit how much power and little recoil these guns have to your advantage. So you can wall bank through pretty much anything that's wall bangable, like you said earlier. Um, since you have less spread and less recoil, you can kind of jiggle peek a little bit more and run and gun a lot better. Um, but we're also going to see, in order to counter that, in order to counter that aggressiveness, sometimes you have to play back and, and play a lot of spots that a lot of people really wouldn't play. Uh, so, like, for example, in sub base, we see a lot of the Chinese teams play up on upper rafters on CT side, just because it's so unorthodox and it's so hard to check so many uh, spots and then look up as well. Um, so get ready to see some spots that we normally wouldn't see a lot of teams play. A lot of run and gun, um, and a lot of uh, abuse on on that wall bang. Right now, guys, it looks like everyone's just about ready to go. I think we're just waiting for the last few players to get settled here, but definitely be sure to hit that follow and stay tuned for the entire tournament here today. We're going to be doing pretty much the whole bracket here live, so it's going to be an exciting road ahead here. But I think we are just waiting on a couple players, and we will get right into our first map of the day. And we are going to have, it's going to be, I believe it's going to be best of one for pretty much all rounds here going into this one. Since it is going to be just one match at a time due to the number of live PCs at the venue. But um, it's going to be pretty exciting here, guys. Be sure to follow us throughout the day, and we'll see who of these new and old faces will take home the victory here from the Raiders Esports Center. So it looks like we are just having a sound issue, guys, with one of the computers. But as soon as we get that resolved, we will be just right back into the action and ready to go here. Um, but it looks like it is going to be one of the guys on Logo just waiting to get that issue resolved. And then we will be right back into it. 
Um, but looking ahead, guys, I'm definitely excited for the season to come. Hopefully we'll have some more details with that coming soon down the line as well. Um, but um, we're going to have, I know, for those of you who don't already know, Team WoW, they're going to be playing under set to destroy this season. I'm excited to see what they can do. They have um, Andre fought coming into the team as well. So I definitely expect them to be a very dominant team going into the season. But looking at some of the other teams around, uh, we're going to have a lot of new teams as well going into the season, which kind of excites me. Um, I know basically every team that uh, was around in the Pro League has at least changed their rosters a little bit. Um, but just looking ahead, I'm excited to see a lot of old faces coming back in as well. So I think this next season could be one of the most competitive we've ever seen. And I've seen um, there's a team right now that's got a couple guys from the former Anixia roster on it. There's Exotech Fresh playing together along with Coda, who was on Team WoW. So I definitely expect that team to be pretty strong, as well as I know uh, Wisdom has a team that seems to be pretty strong as well. And then I know Logic and Toonie are currently working on building a roster. So I think there's going to be some pretty strong rosters going into the new season, but I'm definitely excited to see where the road takes all those teams as we go forward. But um, today, I think we will see a few of those players as well. I know Aaron from Team WoW is going to be playing at the event. A couple people from uh, Wisdom's team, I think, are at the event as well. So I'm actually pretty interested to see who's going to be sort of the strong players at the event today. And some new faces we may see come out as very strong players as well. And hopefully we can see some of the players, if not all of them, come out and join the next season of CFCL as well. And I think this is a great place to get that kind of mentality started before the season here. So um, just looking ahead, though, Juan, what sort of excites you looking ahead towards the new season? What are you expecting from these players on these new lineups? I mean, it's always good to see old faces come back, you know, because – it it creates from it it stop it prevents it from creating a huge uh, skill gap between new players and uh, uh and past players. You kind of want to have the least amount of skill gap you can as possible, just because um it, that can push a lot of the new players away. You know, puts their morale down, makes them feel like they can't really win anything. But when you have a consistent top five teams um, that are constantly battling uh, for that top five spot. Uh, it kind of gives that morale boost to those other teams, letting them kind of feel like they can, you know, be one of those top five teams. Um, I know when I was playing uh, competitive about two years ago, we weren't amazing, but we weren't terrible either. And that slow growth of improvement, especially when you started getting the ESL and the constant weekend tournaments, it really helps you get to a new level. Um, and having a tournament like this, like CFCL, uh, as a league run consistently uh, really helps you improve. And it's going to help you continue to grind so that you can be one of those top five teams. Indeed. And now, guys, we're right into our first match of the day. We are ready to go here. And we've got TNS squad taking on Logo. It is going to be on, actually, the standard Black Widow instead of Black Widow 2.0. So, yeah. Um, Without further ado, we're going to go right into the action, guys, and see what these two teams have in store for us today. And right now, it looks like we are going to see okay, move out. some pretty standard weapon choices here actually coming out uh, for both sides here. But we're going to have, it looks like a slow B push to start this one off for the guys on TNS squad. They're definitely in sync with what they want to do here in this first round. All five players going to be grouping up here towards B-Long. And here come the smokes. They're going to be pushing their way into box room control, but it's going to be who cares who gets the initial pick. It's going to be Chow going down. Who cares picks up the double kill here, and the flank has already come in. And just like that, TNS squad have completely given up control of the map over to the global risk side here. And now it's just going to be a two on four situation. And that's going to be almost a slaughter of an opening round here. Very nice start coming out from Logo. Now here we have it, guys. It is going to be 1-0 to zero to start this one off. Logo with a very strong first round. And they're going to continue that aggression forward. They're going to go for this control play over towards A long. And once again, we see all of the guys on TNS squad. They're grouped up almost a little bit too much here for my taste. It gives them just sort of a corner to get stuck in if the defense tries to wrap around from behind. But this time around, it is going to be Happy Juice getting the opening frag. Chow finds one as well, and now it's going to be a five-on-three situation. Things looking a bit better for the Blacklist side this time around, but right now it is going to be 
Ems in the North American version here, watching the cross, but who cares? He's gonna find one, looking for more, playing on the stairs here with that M4, but it's gonna be 3S who picks up the double kill already, and it's gonna be a two on three, but Happy June will make this an even number, 2v2, as he takes down who cares. Right now, though, HP slightly in favor of the Global Risk side here, but 3S, he's still aggressively holding this catwalk, and gets his third pick of the round, but looking for more here still. So now it's just gonna be Chow here, all alone, trying to clutch this one out in a one on two. It's going to be Emzin, though, rotating here over towards A long, but he's going to run into some trouble, and Chow finds one of the two, but he's already lit down to 27 HP. Things looking fairly solid for 3S here to pick up the final kill of the round and his fourth as well, so definitely a great hold coming out from him so far. Right now, though, it's going to be Chow creeping up Cat. 3S, he hasn't seemed to figure out just yet where this last remaining player is. He's going to be rotating over to B, but the bomb is going to be working its way to get planted here over on A, but so far, it seems like Chow's just afraid to go for this plan. He's going to be hunting here and trying to find 3S, but oh, 3S is going to spot him, and just at the perfect time, too, with the back turn, he gets the fourth kill in his name for the round. Another 2-0 start here. Smoking bomb. Smoking bomb. Starting things off, though, it is going to be Emzin trying to get the scope killed down mid, but it's just not going to happen here. And things are still looking good for the defense as they get aggressive on Cat. 3S picks up one and will be able to fall Flash back ball. safely here. But no, he's actually going to be a little bit more aggressive here, Whoa. pushing forward. And now we can hear you on. Welcome back. Yeah, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to use voice activation. So if I sound pretty annoying, I'm sorry about that. Apparently, a push to talk doesn't work when you're at crossfire. Right now, it is going to be 3S looking for another pick, and it's already down to just one player, and it will be the North American M's in to take him out, but so far, things looking pretty one-sided here, Juan. Logo doing a great job of just maintaining that map control. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really able to see much as I've been trying to figure out this situation, but the previous round, um, we did see some, some good decision-making from them, some good holding on the FA site. That won't be one situation on the second round. I believe Shao kind of overthought it a little bit and got himself into a bad situation. He could have easily planted on A. Uh, but yeah, I mean, too early to tell what's going to happen. Let's see what, what happens now. So far, it is going to be the early map control. Once again, in favor of the Global Risk side of Logo. They're just doing a great job of always getting that A long push to control very early on here. And it seems to be putting these guys in a fairly difficult position. And hopefully they can rebound here, though. They're just seeming to have quite a few issues main 